I, I get it all the time on my channel because obviously I'm dealing with Chinese guitars. Yeah. And I get told, well, these are this slave labor. These course, are being built yeah. by children that are chained yeah, to the wall. Sweatshops, all this stuff, yeah. It really isn't the yeah. case. I've spoken direct to people that work yeah. in factory industries in China yeah. and they value their job. All right, so today's video is another interview that I shot while I was at the Tomon Gearhead University event over in Germany. Now this interview is with Mike from the China Guitar Skeptic channel. Now Mike and I have done a lot of similar content over the years, talking about the Chibson guitars or other knockoff type guitars. And in this interview, I talked to him about how the quality of Chinese manufactured guitars has really changed a lot in the past few years. Now I think this interview makes a really good follow on to the interview I did with Steve from Boston. So I'm going to put a link to that interview in the video description below if you want to check that out first or after you watch this interview. Mike had a lot of really interesting, really intellectual points to make on this topic. So I think you guys will really find this interview interesting. All right guys, Mike from China Guitar Skeptic, here we go. Hey guys, we're here at Tomon Gearhead University and uh, I'm talking with the China Guitar Skeptic, Mike. Hey man, Thanks. good to see you, Max. Thank you very much, man. I mean, uh, it's great to talk to you. Of course, we've been talking about different, you know, guitar things and so forth. Yeah. And um, one of the interests that we both share is affordable instruments. Yeah. Right? We're both big fans of the Harley Benton guitars, of course, from Tomon. Um, but one thing I wanted to get your opinion on is how, I suppose, when it comes to electric guitar, uh, America has always been thought of as, you know, if you really want the top of the line stuff, you know, you get an American made Strat or a Gibson or something like that. But of course, there's a lot of other countries yeah. that have great guitar manufacturing. And I feel like down through the decades, the perception of quality has really shifted a lot. And I, I can think of, uh, I can't say I remember, but I know that back in the in the 70s and so forth if you had a uh, guitar manufactured in japan it was considered inferior yes right now when you think of a japanese guitar you think of amazing you know esp ibanez you think of amazing quality instruments and there has just been this weird sort of flipping of perception down through the decades and i can think of uh, south korea of course yeah. They make some incredible guitars. Well, musical instruments. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I mean, it's got to be a massive percentage of the guitars made. Totally. And really good quality stuff. And now I feel like we're at that same point with China. For sure. And now, but it's, it's in the middle of the shift. You know, there's still this perception of like, oh, a cheap guitar from China. But I've played, I mean, I played recently, I played an Eastman guitar, yeah. sort of a single cut, kind of Les Paul shape, but high-end Chinese manufacturing. And the fretwork is beautiful on it. Exquisite. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm fascinated. I mean, how have you seen the perceptions change, you know, over right. the, maybe the past five years or something? I'm reading a book at the moment called Factfulness. And in that, it deals with perceptions from what we're taught in school. Mm -hmm. And how we view the world and our worldview in the main and this is most of what we would call the western world the us see the world as polarized as the western or the developed world and the developing world and the reality is very different that the majority of the world is a lot better than we think it is and i think that that is reflected in the guitar markets mm -hmm in some of the Far Eastern countries. And I think when it comes to, for example, you, you, you talk about Japan, some of the most sought after guitars now are squires, early 80s squires yes. from Japan, because they are, they are seen as master built and they're seen as a, of, a, of a higher standard and a higher pedigree. I think it's always important to remember the impact and the effect that marketing has on our perceptions, mm -hmm. on mass media, what we're told and what we believe. And I think when you think about the fact that in the US 
and to an extent the UK, the amount that the media drive things and the amount of money that is spent by corporations on marketing, I think we've been somewhat brainwashed into thinking that you can only buy American. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's almost xenophobic, you know, right. to a degree, sure, yeah. to think that anybody could be saying that these countries that are now building guitars can't build right. to the same quality standard. The reason that, that we perhaps frown on it is there's this snobbery around guitars yeah. and, and instruments. If you haven't spent over a thousand dollars on a guitar, it can't be any how good. Could it, how could it be? How good? could it be any yeah, good? Yeah. yeah. So it's like I'm holding probably the most expensive guitar in this room, the PRS. Uh, it's a custom, custom 22, yeah. And it's a beautiful figured top. That's a solid piece of maple. But this could equally have been built in Korea, South mm -hmm. Korea, it, it, a World Musical Instruments, mm -hmm. as is the PRS SE range. Mm -hmm. And although they'll have a veneer perhaps, so it's slightly uh, more cheaply manufactured, yeah, yeah. that has very little effect on anything other than aesthetics. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, if somebody said to me, held out this guitar and one from South Korea, which one do I want? I want the one that's got more monetary value. Right. But I don't, I want to play them both and I want, to, I want the one that <laughs> feels best to play and the one, I, the one I like playing in reality. But the mentality of people yeah. is to think more expensive is better. Yeah. But when more expensive is only more expensive because the labour costs in that country are so much higher because the reality of, uh, of the cost of living and people's earnings is that America is, is world leading in, in terms of disposable income, the amount of wealth that's, that's concentrated mm -hmm. into a very few at, at the top end of, sure, yeah. of the wealth table. And um, that, that is what drives that perception. So no, I don't, I don't think that these, these the Far Eastern countries or any other, any other manufacturing company, be it uh, Korea, be it China, be it Indonesia, be it Vietnam, all places that uh, a lot of very, very good value yeah. instruments coming out. And that's what I like. I think that what we try to do on our channels is that we don't, we don't take any bigoted position. We, instead of looking at the price of guitars, we look at and review the value, the value. of guitars. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's a big distinction to make. So, um, and I think that's changing because also, as I said, this book that I'm reading, Factfulness, shows that the world is, is a much better place than we think it is. And also, poverty isn't as bad as the perception or the media sell us. Sure. So a lot of the workers, I, I get it all the time on my channel because obviously I'm dealing with Chinese guitars. Yeah. And I get told, well, these are... This slave labor. These course, are being built yeah. by children that are chained yeah, to the wall. Sweatshops, all this stuff. Yeah, really isn't the yeah. case. I've spoken direct to people that work yeah. in factory industries in China, yeah. and they value their job. Yes, absolutely. Their moral and ethical code may be skewed as far as we're concerned in terms of copying sure. and trademark infringement. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like that. intellectual property. And so forth. In, yeah. yeah. But, but that's actually a cultural thing because that's not wrong in their eyes. It's not wrong yes. in their culture either. Yeah. It is in ours, but also they value their job of a course. lot more than we think they yeah. do. Do you, do you want to stop the manufacturing there and take their jobs away? I mean, is that yeah. what... Yeah I, yeah, I get those comments all the time too. I'm yeah. like, do you, do you realize what you're suggesting? You know, yeah. like it, would, it, it could only make things worse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, you could make the same guitar. Maybe you could charge more for it. Yeah. You know, you could do that, but don't take the business away. Yeah, and, and I think, I mean, you're making some incredible points here, and I, and I think one thing it really leads to is when you have the, the idea of a cheap guitar comes from such and such country, mm -hmm. it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Because y you think, okay, I want a cheap guitar, so I'm going to ask this country to manufacture it for me. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, well, if that's what you want, we'll give you a cheap guitar. Well, of course, it's not going to be it's not going to be of the same quality as a more expensive guitar, you know that they could manufacture. Yeah. And and so I feel like just now, maybe the past couple of years, that has finally started to change, where people are, 
you know, they, they respect the manufacturing enough where like, yeah, I would like a high-end Chinese guitar and they're beautiful instruments. You know? Look at the Harley Benton um, yeah. Fusion line. And oh, some yeah. of the things we're seeing here, um, Agufish mm -hmm. has designed the headless guitar for Harley Benton. And you look at that and you look at the, the high-end range, they've gone to places like China and Indonesia and said, we want this wood, we want this standard, we want a a maple cap, a real maple cap. We want stainless steel frets. Yeah. We would like you to build this for us. What's the cost? And okay, we, we've got used to and got spoiled with buying Harley Benton guitars for sub $200, mm -hmm. which is great. But now they're looking in the range of three to $400. But what you're paying for is brass tacks, better right. quality standards on it, better um, appointments with the, with the hardware. Yeah. Um, better woods, proper caps rather than um, rather than veneers. You're looking at okay, sighties aside. You're looking at sure, yeah, really nice fingerboard material. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at stainless steel frets. The fret finishing is awesome. You know, nicely yeah. rounded over rolled frets, rolled over fingerboards. The the demand has gone up for the quality to rise, but the price hasn't gone up by the same coefficient. Right. So whereas Absolutely. PRS might charge $6,000 for this, Harley Benton might be able to make it in Vietnam for $600. Yeah. Now, if you go back to that whole thing of the brand snobbery, and you don't mind that it doesn't have that on the headstock, mm -hmm. and sorry, Paul Reed Smith, this is, I'm a big, big PRS fan. Of They're course. Right yeah. in the center of my heart. I play, yeah. I play SEs because I can't afford the, the core range, but um, I'd, I would absolutely adore to have this or any real PRS. Oh, yeah. But this can be built cheaper by labor that's paid less. And when people get upset about me saying with labor that's paid less, let's look at the cost of living in that country. So if somebody earns, uh, the, the, the population of the world, around 10 billion, one billion of them live on less than a pound a day. That's mm -hmm. true poverty. Sure. The majority of what we would call the old developing world as such, live on between $2 and $32 yeah. a week. That's 8 billion people. Yeah. Yeah. Only the top 1 of course, yeah. billion people earn more than $32. Yeah. And, and do you earn more than $32 a day? <laughs> I certainly do. I hope so. On a good day. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, so, and the per yeah, that perception is totally strange. But I mean, I that's, that's I just for. I just think that I mean, and and you know, we're sitting here talking about this and of course we both love, you know, UK and American manufacturing and German sure. manufacturing. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, and, and I do still think at, at this point, if you want the absolute best, then you do have to go to yeah, Japan or America or UK mm. or something like that. Korea. Korea, absolutely. Well, see, there we go. See, now we can argue about it. Wait, but how soon Vietnam and how soon Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm just, I'm, yeah, so just, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. I mean, we love that manufacturing, but... I'm very glad that that stigma is finally changing. Yeah. I think we said earlier in another video that we're living in the golden age of guitars. Yeah. And that golden age is because people are starting to realize that they will pay for the name. They will pay mm -hmm. for this. Um, and people don't mind doing that. And it's a status symbol. And people buy status symbols every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I drive a really beat up crappy car uh, because I'm not fussed about guitars. But I know some people like a Maserati or sure. a Porsche or a Ferrari. That's their thing. Uh, it doesn't float my boat. Yeah. And, and if you're looking for value, you can find value wherever, it, 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 be it in grocery shopping, yeah. right up to Ferrari <laughs> shopping, you know. So that's, that's all it is, and I, I agree. One thing that I, I do wanna make clear is that, yeah, I'm not saying that the, the, the UK or the USA brands and manufacturers are, are ripping people off of with the prices. Yes, they're inflated. But what you're paying for is you're paying for decades of heritage mm -hmm. and reputation. And you're also paying for the fact, for example, with PRS, they've never let a single guitar go out of the factory that is anything less than perfect. Yeah. And that's one of the things they're known for is that consistency. But think about yeah. that statement. Yeah. They have never let a single guitar go out of their factory that isn't perfect. Yeah. Where else can you get that? Uh, even airlines, you know, <laughs> when you think about that, sure, yeah. airlines crash. Yeah. 
It's just a fact of life. Yeah. I've PRS. never seen a PRS crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one fly either, shall we? <laughs> no, no. Well, tell me again, what, what was the book, you're, the name of the book you're reading? It's called Factfulness. Factfulness. Well, yeah. guys, that's, I, I think I'm going to read that book. I'm going to put a link in the video description below for you guys to check that out. And uh, Mike, it's always great talking with you. And I think something else we'll do. We'll talk a little bit more afterwards. I'll also put some links uh, for just some of our favorite budget-friendly, you know, yeah. guitars. I'll Glarys. put that below. Yeah, Glarys, Harley Bentons. Yeah. Anything you want, maybe some Squires, that kind of stuff. Cool, man. It's but, been an absolute joy again, Max. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Take care. All right, guys. So that was my interview with Mike from the China Guitar Skeptic channel. I'm going to put some links in the video description below and on the end screen if you want to go check out his channel and some of his videos. He was a great guy to talk to and also to hang out with over that Tomon event. I also want to give a big shout out to the video crew over at Tomon for helping me shoot that interview. Really quickly, I would also like to mention my Patreon, which I have up now over at patreon.com forward slash guitarmax. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, hit the notification bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.